Hi guys, welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining me here today as we continue our investigation into percents and percent applications. In part one of this video series, we talked about this pattern, some part is some percent of some whole. And we said that this pattern hap happens to occur quite a bit in the real world. And so we said, if we know two of these three pieces of information, that we can convert this relationship into a percent. And I believe in the last video, we did a example where four teachers all took tests that covered the same topic but had um, different lengths. So one teacher might have had 20 questions, another teacher might have had 30 questions, another teacher might have had 35 questions. And it made it very difficult for us to tell which teacher did the best on that assessment. So instead of using the ratio of the part they got right to the number of questions, we took those ratios and said, what if all the tests had 100 questions? What would everybody's score out of 100 have been? And we said that that's called a percent. We're saying what part out of 100 is the same as the relationship or ratio that you're given. And so in this video series, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple examples that we would consider to be percent problems that might apply more directly to the real world. Rather than just somebody giving you a question about percents, instead we're going to give you some situations where percents might be helpful. So here's the problem we have first. Ethan is working as an ornithologist. That's someone who studies birds. And he has been told that 80% of the birds in a particular area are robins. So far, American robins. So far, he's been able to track 274 birds. If what he has been told is correct, how many would we expect to be American robins? So we read through here, and we read it a couple times, trying to find some important piece of information. For example, I can see an 80% already. Since we're talking about percent problems, it's very likely that's important. But here's what I want you to realize. We are talking about 80% of the birds being American robins. 80% of the birds are American robins. Now that phrase is extremely important for us because our pattern says that some part should be some percent of some total. In this story, we're told that 80% of the birds are American robins. So in this story, the robins are the part. The robins should be 80% of the total number of birds. Realizing that this is the pattern we're looking for is probably the most difficult part about solving problems like this. Now notice what the question says. It says, if what he has been told is correct, how many would you expect to be robins? In other words, when I go to set up my parts and my holes, I should be looking for a part that is the number of robins. We know there's a percent of the total that's number of robins, and we should be looking for a hole. Since the robins are my part, do we know the number of robins we've seen? Well, no, that's what the question asks. How many would you expect to be robins? Well, that, that we don't know. So we're going to plug in x. What we do know is that the robins should be 80% of the whole number of birds. So we have the 80%. Do we know the whole number of birds? Well, yeah, that's given to us right here, 274. You've already finished the hardest part of the problem. Once you realize what your part is, and your whole is, that guides us in putting the numbers in the right place. Everything else is always going to be the same. Means extremes property, multiply those together, divide by 100, and you get 219.2. Now we can't really have 0.2 of a bird, so we would say he would expect there to be about 219 American robins. Once the numbers are in the right spot, once we know what the part and the whole are in our story, it should be very easy to solve these. That's why I like doing percent problems as proportions. Here's another one for you. Brennan is working for quality control at a factory that produces rainbow unicorn plush toys. Although they work to ensure every toy meets the highest quality standards, occasionally there are problems on the production line and faulty toys are built. Company policy states that no more than 0.15% of the plush toys can be faulty. Brennan has discovered four faulty toys today. 
In order to meet the company standard, how many total toys need to have been produced? Okay, notice some things. We have 0.15% of the plush toys can be faulty, and we know that we have four faulty toys. So when I go to set up my part and my whole, I'm looking... Hmm. Let's try this one. Brennan is working for quality control at a factory that produces rainbow unicorn plush toys. Let's try this one. Brennan is working for quality control at a factory that produces rainbow unicorn plush toys. Although they work to ensure every toy meets the highest quality standard, occasionally there are problems on the production line and faulty toys are built. Company policy states that no more than 0.15% of the plush toys can be faulty. Brennan has discovered four faulty toys today. In order to meet the company standard, how many total toys need to have been produced? So we read through here and we're looking for important pieces of information. Here's what I find. 0.15% of the plush toys can be faulty. This is very important because this tells me that we're finding a percent of the toys. That means the toys must be my total. Brennan has discovered four faulty toys. Remember, the faulty toys can only be 0.15%. And notice that we're looking for the total number of toys. So when I go to set up my sum part is some percent of some total, can you think about what your part, your percent, and your total are? If you need a second to try this on your own, I'd recommend pausing the video. I'm going to assume that if you wanted to do that, you already have. Hopefully you realize that the defects or the faulty toys are a percent of the total toys. The most important thing about this problem is realizing what is your part and what is your whole. The percents are easy to spot because of the percent sign. So when you go to fill in your proportion, the number part is the number of faulty toys. Do we know that? Well, the problem told us there were four. The percent that are faulty is the 0.15, and the question asks us what the total is. Again, you've already done the hardest part. Cross multiply using the means extremes property, 4 times 100, and then we divide both sides by 0.15, and we come up with 2,666.6 repeating toys. In other words, we have to produce at least 2,667 toys if we have four that are faulty. If more than four are faulty, or if we've produced fewer than this number of toys, then we have failed in meeting our quality control standards. You get the hang of this? Here's another one. I'm going to read through it, um, and then I want to give you an opportunity to try this one on your own. Somehow bottle flipping became internet famous, uh, an internet famous pastime. Suppose you've been practicing and decide to challenge your friends to see who has the highest rate of successful flips. Since you don't all have the same amount of time and the same flipping speed, you decide to use percentages to compare. Suppose you land 57 of the 68 flips. What percentage of the time were you successful? I'm going to recommend you pause now, try this on your own, and then um, take a look at what we're, we've done. I notice that we land 57 out of a total of 68. I also notice they're asking me for the percentage. So when I go to set this up, my part is the number of successful flips, the ones I land, because they are going to be a percentage of the total flips. So when I go to set this up, the number I succeeded in landing was 57. I don't know the percent, that's what they asked me, and I know the total is 68. Again, this is the hardest part. From there on out, it's means extremes property, a little multiplication, divide both sides by 68, and you get 83.832. You land about 83. Wow, it says 0.5. About 83.8% of your flip. So I got to go back and fix that little typo. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Most simple percent problems are going to look something like this. You always have to keep in mind this pattern. If you go in looking for parts, percents, 
and holes, and you realize the order those go in in your proportion, this should be pretty straightforward for you. The next lesson is going to talk about some examples of parts and holes that you might see in real life. It's also going to include some vocabulary that might be less familiar to students. A lot of times we find that when students are solving percent problems, sometimes it's uh, purely, purely the language that throws them off. So we're going to do several of those examples. As always, I do appreciate you taking the time to join us here today. Please give us a big old thumbs up, ring that bell to turn on your notifications so that you you can hear everything new coming out of Nunley Math. I wish you all the very, very best. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.